What's the first reaction that people usually have when you talk about being gluten-free or cutting gluten out of your diet? The first thing is usually they look at you like you're a hippie or they look at you like you're just jumping on the trendy bandwagon. All right, I've been gluten-free for a long time and I will tell you that it's not because it's trendy, it's because there's a lot of legitimate science that shows it has some serious effects when it comes down to how your body absorbs and utilizes nutrients. And again, it all comes back down to that famed inflammation that I'm always talking about. I do want to say, if you want to see all of the videos that I post up here on YouTube, make sure that you click on that little bell and turn on the notifications. But also, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can be part of the live videos that I do as well. All right, so let's get down to the science. When it comes down to understanding what gluten does in the body, we first have to take a look at what gluten does when it comes down to making food or making dough or anything like that. You see, of course we have the water, the flour, and the yeast. But what we don't always look at is the role of gluten. You see, gluten provides the structure. Gluten provides sort of the frame so that the dough can rise and actually have structure and actually have some real sustainability so it doesn't just collapse. Okay, the yeast allows it to rise, but without the actual gluten to hold it together, it would still ultimately collapse. Now, why does that make gluten bad? Why is gluten bad when we look at it like that? Well, that same reaction that's happening there actually happens in your intestinal tract in a lot of ways. Now, I don't mean that literally, but I mean gluten is very, very hard to break down. It always has been, but recently it's become more difficult. You see, the problem isn't necessarily with gluten itself. The problem is how we have adapted to the overconsumption of gluten. When we consume a lot of gluten and a lot of wheat over time, we ultimately find that our bodies have a harder time reacting to it. They don't really get a good response. They end up having an immune response. There are even some older studies that took a look at frozen serum from the 1940s and 50s versus serum from today and how the body reacts to gluten now versus how it did then. And it's totally different. The body totally responds differently to gluten. As a matter of fact, it was like something like four or five times more people now have a response to gluten in a negative way than people did back then. And ultimately, you don't have to have a celiac issue to even have an intolerance to gluten. So here's what happens. When you consume gluten, I want you to think of a miniature paper cut, like a really small paper cut that's happening inside your intestinal tract. You're getting these micro traumas and these micro fissures that are causing issues. Now it's not the actual cut or the trauma itself that causes the issue. It's the inflammatory or immune response that is happening because of that. So when we have that immune response in the intestinal tract, it can cause what's known as intestinal permeability. And I'll get to that in one moment. Now, again, it's not the gluten itself. It's something known as the amylase trypsin inhibitor. This amylase trypsin inhibitor is what shuts down certain components of the intestinal tract, but triggers different parts of the immune system. This amylase trypsin inhibitor has been a result of adding different pest controls into the wheat supply. So when we're trying to make it a little bit more sustainable or make it so that we can mass produce it, we're adding compounds that are triggering an immune response within the body. So this amylase trypsin inhibitor causes this inflammation in our gut, which therefore leads to intestinal permeability. You might be wondering what intestinal permeability is. A lot of us would think that when it comes down to absorbing nutrients, that we want more to be absorbed. We want bigger chunks, but that's not the case. You see, when things are absorbed in the intestinal tract, we want them to be micronized. We want them to be as small as possible. That way they can assimilate, they can get through the enterocyte, they can cross through the membrane of a cell, and they can actually react. They can trigger energy, they can be broken down into glucose. When they're larger chunks, the body doesn't really know what to do with them. You see these larger chunks get into the bloodstream, they get into the plasma, and it triggers an immune response. This immune response triggers systemic chronic inflammation, which can lead to a multitude of different things. We're talking about chronic fatigue, we're talking about all kinds of joint issues, and we're talking about a major slowdown in overall fat loss. So when we have big chunks like that, that are getting through the bigger cracks because the intestines are now more permeable, it really sets a cascade of negative things. Now there's another component of gluten that doesn't even have anything to do with inflammation, and that's something known as zonulin. You see, zonulin is a specific prolamin, a type of protein that is in gluten already. Now this zonulin doesn't actually trigger inflammation at all. In fact, studies have shown that there's no response as far as inflammation goes with zonulin, but it has a direct line item correlation with more intestinal permeability, ultimately what's known as a leaky gut. I don't like to throw the term leaky gut around because I feel like it's overused and I feel like it's very just markety and trendy and it's not really how I want to talk. But we do have a direct link with zonulin and the ability to absorb larger chunks, which ultimately leads to, of course, more systemic inflammation. Now, how do we get rid of the zonulin? Well, we can't. 
It's part of the new adulterated structure of gluten, and we simply can't avoid it. And almost everyone has that negative response to the zonulin in the first place. But let's step in another direction for one second. When we look at how things are absorbed in the intestines, we don't always think about how that might affect other things, like our mood or our brain or anything like that. Well, the simple fact is that when we have inflammation that is occurring in the system, it's going to trigger neuroinflammation as well. Neuroinflammation is different kinds of inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6 and interleukin-15 that can cross over the blood-brain barrier, or through the blood-brain barrier rather, to trigger more inflammation in the actual brain. Now, when we have things like interleukin-1, 6, 15, even 9, we do run into a multitude of other issues. But what is this a result of? It's a result of something known as a lipopolysaccharide that can get in through the leaky gut or the more permeable intestines. So it's a direct correlation with a particular lipopolysaccharide that gets into the system. The simplest way for me to explain this is you have one potent molecule that gets through the intestinal barrier, gets into the bloodstream, and triggers a toxic reaction. It's not the lipopolysaccharide itself. It's all the reactions that occur. Remember, the response to gluten is never a cold, hard response to gluten itself. It's a chain reaction of different misfires of cells and misfires of the immune system that cause us to have a reaction. That's why every single person's reaction might be subtly different. Someone that has celiac is going to be in a lot of intestinal pain and have a lot of irritable bowel syndrome type issues. Now, someone that has a complete different approach on gluten might end up finding that they just feel lethargic and brain foggy. Anyway, I thought that this deserved some clearing up. Too many people come to me and say that I'm just trendy because I don't like gluten. Fact is, there's science that backs it up, and now you know it. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel for everything that comes down to health, wellness, fitness, mindset, family, and you name it. Make sure you let me know if you have any ideas for future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.